Welcome back everybody. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I am uh, today in the process of working on a Singer 201 Centennial. This is a machine that uh, I recently picked up. I don't even know if I did a purchasing series video on it, but uh, working on it today and getting ready to do some polishing on the nickel plated surfaces. Um, nickel and or chrome depending. And I was uh, I had remembered that I've mentioned in videos before about different products you can use. And sometimes there's not just one product, you know, sometimes I go on YouTube and I'm reading things uh, in other categories like automotive, for example, and people say, oh, you know, this is the only thing you should use. And well, it's nice to have options, you know, uh, sometimes depending on where you live, you may not have, you know, you know how uh, retail stores can be. Maybe you can go online and order something but maybe you don't want to. Maybe you just want to, you know, grab it on a Saturday and start something. Anyway, I have highlighted these two products in the past. This is Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. I got it in an uh, auto supply store. And um, this is Barkeeper's Friend. I typically find this in uh, supermarkets. Um, and it's a liquid. It's called Soft Cleanser. It's a liquid version of uh, of Barkeeper's Friend um, cleanser, dry cleanser. I, I use the liquid. Uh, that's all I would use for having it around sewing machines. And this really is, it acts like a polish. It's not overly abrasive, at least not for the things I've used it for. And I believe Barkeeper's Friend uh, has uh, some sort of, I don't know if it's a pH change, it may be an acid, I'm not sure, but it is really good at removing tarnish and uh, any other kind of soiling that you might have on metal. So we'll see how much I've got on here, uh, and I'm gonna do half of it for you guys. But today I'm not gonna use these two products. I wanted to talk to you about another product, and that is this one. Uh, and this is something I had, I actually had this uh, polish. I had gotten this in a hardware store, uh, if you're in the United States, an old-fashioned hardware store might have this. You're not always going to see it in like a Lowe's or Home Depot. They typically carry, uh, you know, the, the biggest uh, known and best-selling products. But if you go into an old-fashioned hardware store, uh, it's kind of cool. Sometimes you find items you wouldn't find in other places. Um, and this is called Wenol or Wenol, W-E-N-O-L. It's made by Reckitt Benkiser, which is a, a household, well, I think they're a household product manufacturer. This is made in Germany. Um, I'm just mentioning that, so you, maybe you, it would find it, you would find it easier to locate. Uh, by the way, this I found this in a hardware store in the United States. I do know that in Canada, you can get something very similar, whether it's the same manufacturer, I don't know, but it's called Autosol, A-U-T-O-S-O-L, and that product I saw in a uh, automotive parts supplier in Canada. But in the United States, uh, you can get this. I got this in a hardware store, and it's called Metal Polish. And just like with any of these other products that I've mentioned to you guys before, anytime you're gonna use anything like this, uh, whether it's a polish or a cleaner, always test it first. And you guys know if you ever read the fine print on these products, it says, please test in an inconspicuous area to be sure that it is compatible with your purpose. And that's a good idea on, particularly on something vintage, right? Like a sewing machine. Uh, but I have used this before and it works really well on the, uh, the nickel plated uh, parts that come on uh, many of our vintage sewing machines. You're looking right now, this is the side plate of the 201 that I just said I've been working on. And then I've got the, uh, this is the clutch knob. This is the knob, of course, you loosen or tighten depending on whether you are going to use the bobbin winder that's built into your vintage machine. Um, this is not, you know, I suspect that many of the, the parts, the metal parts on other brands will be similar, but again, always test it to be sure. All I can share with you is what I'm using it on right now. So, uh, you know, like I say, testing things is a good way just to be extra careful. So I'm going to, where's my other glove here? I'm gonna put a glove on just to keep, um, I like to keep my skin clean if possible. Uh, just in case, you never know, you know, uh, we all have um, 
We all have gloves like this. Sometimes uh, I use them a lot when I'm working on my car just to keep stuff off my skin. And I have, what you're looking at here is a piece that I cut off of one of the test stitching strips. Whenever I uh, overhaul a sewing machine, as I'm getting toward the end, I always do a testing for this stitch quality. And uh, I'm trying to remember which machine, maybe you guys will remember, this has got like pink uh, on one side and purple on the other. It, it had a really nice stitch, whatever it was. Anyway, I'm down cycling this, right? I'm using it as a rag uh, because I want to be um, as uh, 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 frugal as possible, right? With materials, at least downsize it uh, before it gets uh, disposed of. Be less wasteful that way. And so I'm gonna take the polish. <clears throat> and one thing I would mention to all of you is it may be surprising, but you don't need a ton of this stuff. And it's a good thing. I can't remember what I paid for this tube. It was probably $10 or $9 or something. That sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Uh, because it can last you a long time if you use it uh, judiciously, and you should, because you don't need much. Metal polish is not like paint. So uh, anyway, this stuff is kind of an interesting color. It's almost the color of... Uh, I don't know, like a rouge color in women's cosmetics. Uh, it also looks like if you've ever had a classic, um, uh, a classic um, uh, craft toy like Silly Putty. It's kind of that weird pink flesh tone color, uh, pink beige tone color. Uh, anyway, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna spread, I'm gonna take my cloth and I'm gonna spread the, um, the polish, let's get closer to you guys. I'm just gonna spread it here. I'm not really rubbing it into the metal at this point. And uh, you might think, well, why don't you just rub out and clean the metal? What's the, what's the big deal? Well, a lot of times we might forget that metal polish, it has some very fine micro abrasives. Let me get myself a little more here. Uh, but it also has uh, ingredients, which are largely you know, a trade secret of the manufacturer. But uh, whether it's a change in pH or some sort of solvent, uh, the same is true, by the way, for things like car waxes. But polishes work in part by friction, which we're going to test in a minute when I go to um, when I go to buff this out. But right now, I'm just going to sort of think of this as like I'm trying to paint the item very lightly with this polish, and then I'm just going to let it sit for a few minutes uh, while I yap on and on about you know things like metal polish and making a video on metal polish. Here's my clutch knob, and you can see it's got some oxidation there. Uh, sometimes that happens. Uh, it doesn't mean it's rusted. It's just sort of a surface. Uh, who knows why? And I'm just going to do, you know, I've left a little portion of it there so we can do like a, uh, well, it's not really a before and after, but you get the idea. I want you guys to see the difference it makes because sometimes it's hard to gauge that. So again, letting that polish sit. I don't have a, you know, I don't even know if the instructions on these things tell you to let it sit. Um, but I'm going to just because I, I have a sense that, that uh, these um, polishes do have a chemistry in them that helps to break down and remove some of the uh, oxidation. Sometimes you may not have oxidation. What you might have is simply old sewing machine oil that has oxidized uh, along with dirt and dust that's settled on it. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I went ahead, I've already done, I've already um, polished this back plate and it was actually dirtier than, than the side plate. It was fairly brown, kind of a sort of a dingy yellow coating, which who knows what that was. You know, it was just old oil, dirt. And um, uh, let's see if my glove covered. Yeah, it's it's going to let me zoom in. I didn't know if my, uh, my, my uh, setup here would let me do that. So you can see the difference it makes. Now you might say, well, you know, that's not mechanical. But again, um, as one of my viewers once helped me think of uh, sewing machine uh, overhauls or restoration is really a matter of conservation. Uh, I've had people ask me, hey, you know, how do I strip my machine? I want to repaint it. I want to put new lacquer on it. There are people that do that. I don't um, because most of what clients pay for is time, okay? The time that I spend to overhaul these machines is significant, uh, and, and actually that's true for any, anyone out there that overhauls machines. Uh, it just takes a while. 
that's just the way it is. That's how, um, that's how, uh, uh, if you're going to do it properly, it just takes a long time. And uh, it would be an entirely different project to strip a machine. And I am not a fan of that. A, uh, it's going to take a lot of time and quite a lot of investment in dollars just for the time, uh, labor, and then the materials. And uh, you really need to do it properly. You need to use high quality industrial finishes. You can't use house paint or craft paint. It would look terrible. And, and I personally, this is, this is really just a subjective thing. I believe that the, the years and years of use of sewing machines, they develop a patina. Okay. And, um, and I, I just not kind of think it's neat. I want to preserve them, stabilize them, but I don't really want to strip them and make them look brand new. Sometimes I had machines that I had that Singer 99K recently that I think I showed you guys in a, in a table. And that thing has a gorgeous finish. I, you know, it's, Lacquer finishes are, are, uh, are delicate and they're a little fussy if they're not taken care of. And someone, you know, you can tell either they didn't sew at all or they took a lot of care of it. Okay, now that I've found something to talk about while I was waiting for the polish to, to dry out, so I'm going to take a dry side of my fabric here and I'm just going to buff this. Um, and if it was a white cloth, you might be able to see a little bit more uh, of what was what was coming off here. And, and I kind of wish I had done this with that round piece. You would see more of a contrast. I'm not even sure how much contrast we'll see. Maybe we'll see more on the little clutch knob. But um, so I'll take this and where are my cotton swabs when I need them? Here we go. Uh, cotton swabs are good, believe it or not. You guys have heard me say the word cotton swab probably more than anything in any of my videos. And I've got some ridges here in this sort of a fluted uh, texture on the uh, Singer side plate. And so I'm going to take that to kind of get down below where the, um, where the cloth could not really reach. Now, I'll just take just a bit more here. And, and I'm going to go back over it, like I say, and really buff it out. I'm not going to ask you guys to watch me do that. But let's see if you guys can detect in this light. It's tough, but I think right here you'll see the line. Um, and it's kind of subtle in this case, to be honest. Uh, if I didn't do it, would it be okay? Probably. This is one of the things I can do for the future owner you know, they, you know, people want things to look nice. They don't have to be stripped and repainted, but uh, you want it to be cleaned and buffed. And uh, this is, again, uh, I'm getting toward the end of the restoration here because uh, all of the things I do when I'm taking different parts of the machine, you know, I've had the motor off, uh, greasing its bearings and so forth, but I save the aesthetic on the exterior for the end. You know, that's kind of the icing on the cake there, getting to see this machine finally come up so again, I don't know if you guys can detect uh, lighting and cameras are a little weird, but I can see the sort of a faint line here. Let's try it on the clutch knob and see if we get uh, something a little more dramatic. We may or may not. Uh, and I'm going to change the camera angle so I can sort of rest the knob here on the table so I have something to push against. Now I think you can really see the difference here. Um, and I really like what these polishes are able to pull off. What has essentially happened is you'll see the oxidation that has come out of here. And we've got a lot of nice shine, right? And it looks as if someone went in and tried to scratch it off, I don't know, with a screwdriver or something. But again, you know, uh, machines can tell you a lot about their history when you look at them, but you can really see the difference here. And honestly, if I were to try the barkeeper's friend or the mother's, they may have done just as well, okay? So, you know, this is not really a test to see which polish does better. Uh, I've had good success with all of them and you know this is not a sponsored video 
Um, it's just things I found that I have you know noticed that work, and uh, I have a theory that the that the Winol, the German metal polish, is probably uh, a finer grit than the barkeepers or the the mothers. But again, you're not you know you're not doing Japan Japaning of lacquer or something. Uh, I think either one of them would be great. The key here is to get the oxidation off. And as one of my viewers pointed out, uh, in lieu of, pardon me, in lieu of uh, sewing machine oil, which is also a good way to sort of put up a little bit of a vapor barrier on metal once it's finished, uh, there are actually oils and emollients, waxes in the polish. And in this case, uh, you know, unlike a bobbing case where you have to be really careful, that's an example where you don't want to get polish and waxes in a place where you can't get them out because that can create issues. Remember, a bobbin case is a functioning, um, it's like a, it's like a, like a half of, it's like a bowl shaped uh, mechanism with lots of springs in it. So you want to, you want to, that's right, the reason I like using sewing machine oil. Um, and thank you to the viewer who suggested that we can also use very fine grit nail files in places like those uh, bobbin cases. But for this, um, the viewer who mentioned that waxes and polish also provide a bit of a moisture seal, I think they're right. Um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So there's a pretty nice improvement there, right? And as far as this over here, we will simply count that as part of the history of the machine. Now that sounds a bit of a cop-out. It's like, well, no, but really every part of these machines, these machines were, were used sometimes by just one person all their lives. And then at other times, they may have been handed down from generation to generation. So I'm not, you know, I clean uh, and polish buff very conservatively, conservation, that word again, uh, these machines to preserve them, but not to try to hide their history. Uh, that would take uh, far more time than my clients want to pay for. But what they want is a machine that's been gone through mechanically, and then has it has been given, um, you know, a bit of an aesthetic, uh, buff and shine, if you will. And of course, cleaning, the, the bodies, uh, the paints have soiling that has to come off. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if you have, uh, other than the products that you see uh, that I've been talking about today, maybe you have something else that works. Um, again, I always wanna try, uh, try things out carefully when I'm trying something new, but uh, just thought I would share this with you while I was in the process of uh, getting the Singer 201 Centennial ready for its debut. You guys will see it be uh, running soon. But thanks again for watching, folks. And, uh, and again, if you have any other cleaning or buffing materials, uh, polishing uh, products that you would like uh, uh, me to know about, just leave it there in the comments, and we will see you in the next video. Take care.